everyone. I'm Shaylin here with Readsy. So today we're going to talk about how to format your book for publication. We do have an older video on how to format your manuscript for submission. So if you're formatting your book in order to go into the query trenches, you can check that out. There's a whole other type of formatting, which is formatting the final copy of your book in order to publish it. There are some different choices here that you can make depending on what route you want to take for your formatting. So let's talk about the different tools at your disposal and the different methods that you can take for formatting your book. Well, formatting your book in a word processor in order to submit it has its own technical specifications. Formatting for publication is a whole other beast. It takes some technical know-how, it can take a little bit of creativity, but luckily for those with no formatting or design experience, there are lots of tools out there to make formatting your book really easy. So let's run through all the different tools that you can use to format your book and the different options out there for formatting. Before we start, here are just a few really quick things to keep in mind before you go into formatting and deciding what tools you're going to use. First of all, know the correct format. Are you formatting for ebook? Or are you formatting for paperback? If you're formatting for multiple different styles, you may need to format multiple times. You can't just publish an ebook with the exact same format that you used for your paperback. So keep in mind what format you're going to be publishing your book in. As well, check your ebook distributor and print on demand service to know which file formats and trim sizes they require. You don't want to check this after the fact and then realize that you formatted in a trim size that the print on demand service doesn't accept. If you're formatting for print, make sure to order a proof copy to check for any errors. It's really common with print on demand to look through the preview and it all looks good, but then when you order the proof copy, there are a couple errors. So it's definitely worth taking the time to order a proof copy to check your interior layout before you actually publish the book. All right, so let's start with the first formatting method, which is to use Microsoft Word. Now, a lot of authors, when they think about formatting, immediately just jump to formatting in Word because it seems like the most obvious option. Word is a really popular writing software. A lot of writers use it to write. So therefore, they think, why don't I use it to publish? And you can format a book in Microsoft Word, but of all the options in this video, it is definitely the most challenging. So while it seemed like the most obvious option, because many of us are already familiar with Microsoft Word, it's actually the trickiest and most labor intensive. If you're new to formatting, it's actually not what I'd recommend. It can be quite fussy. Keep in mind, Word was not designed to format interior layouts. It was designed as a word processing tool. However, if it is the route you want to take, I would recommend starting by downloading a template from the print on demand service that you're using. Formatting in Word can also cause a lot of glitches. So you will have to go through the final version with a fine tooth comb. The first thing to do is that it's really important to get the document size and margins correct. Formatting in just a regular old Word doc with the default settings won't export properly to print or ebook. You can download a template from KDP, which lets you choose the trim size and input your page count. And from there, you can customize the formatting. Once you have the correct document size set up, you can start by adding everything to the template. So the title page, introduction, acknowledgements, front matter, back matter, and the book itself. Then you can set your font and paragraph size spacing. While you may have drafted in double space, you don't want to publish in double spacing. So you can set it to single space with a 0.2 inch indent on the first line. Then you can go and edit your chapter headings by going into the styles tab and uh, selecting heading one in order to make sure that all your chapter headings are correctly labeled in the document as a heading and all have the same style. Then you can add a table of contents. This is one of the trickier parts actually, and I'll leave a more detailed article from Kindle printer that walks through this step by step. Basically, you just go to table of contents, select custom table of contents. You want to add bookmarks by highlighting the contents and then under the insert links tab, selecting add bookmark. If you're formatting for print, there are a few more extra steps you need to take from here. You may have to readjust the margins for the print copy since it's going to require proper gutters in order to print properly. Again, you can do this manually, but it's much easier to just use a template. From there, you can paste in your manuscript, edit the style and headers, and add the page numbers. Make sure to look at the preview. Formatting Word can be glitchy, so you really want to look over it carefully and look over the final exported versions and the proof copy carefully as well. Now that felt like a bit of a hassle. It is a bit of a hassle, but there is a much easier alternative and that is to use the Reezy Book Editor. Unlike Word, which was designed for word processing but not for formatting, we designed the RBE to be as easy as possible for indie authors to use to export to ebook file format. If formatting a book intimidates you, this is probably the easiest way to format. And there are three really clean looking templates that you can pick from. And it's also free. The first thing to do if you didn't draft in the RBE is to import your manuscript and then format the paragraphs and chapter headings. Then you can also add images and 
hinge notes and scene breaks, upload the cover, set your table of contents and copyright page, and export. It's super quick and super easy. We have a whole guide on how to use the RBE to format a book, so that is linked in the description. The next option is to use Vellum. Vellum is probably the most popular software designed specifically for formatting. It can be a bit of an investment. Vellum eBooks costs $1.99 US and allows you to create and export unlimited eBooks, and Vellum Press, which allows you to create and export unlimited eBooks and print books, costs $2.49 US. It may not be worth it if you're only formatting one book. If you have a long career as an indie author ahead of you, it may very well be worth the investment. Vellum is not a word processing tool. It's not designed for drafting. It is designed specifically for formatting. So you can import your Word docs and it will automatically insert the chapter breaks. You can then go on to do the rest of the formatting in Vellum, customize with special features like ornamental break. However, Vellum really doesn't lend well to editing the actual text. If you want to rewrite a sentence, it can be pretty cumbersome. So make sure you're importing the final version. The main feature that makes Vellum a favorite among so many authors is the its book styles. It offers a bunch of different style templates for the overall aesthetic look of your formatting. And from there, you can customize those templates as well. Tons of options for chapter titles, first paragraphs, versus images, chapter and scene breaks. You can even upload your own images to use as scene break. However, one of the biggest downsides of Vellum is that it is a Mac-only software. So if you're a PC user, you'll have to find another alternative. However, the general consensus around Vellum is that even though it has a few quirks to get used to at the beginning, it is overall pretty easy to use. We have a full review of Vellum, so I'll leave that linked in the description if it's something you're considering. The next option is Atticus. Like Vellum, Atticus is a tool designed with book formatting in mind. It's kind of a Vellum alternative. And like Vellum, it's a lot less fussy than trying to format completely from scratch in Microsoft Word. There are 17 different chapter heading styles and you can customize all the little details like in Vellum. It's also cheaper than Vellum at 149 US for a one-time purchase. If you're thinking of investing in a tool for formatting and you're torn between Vellum and Atticus, it's worth looking at both, comparing both to see which one would best suit you. For a one-time author, it may not be worth the investment, but if you plan to self-publish a number of titles, Vellum or Atticus Atticus may pay for itself in the long run. Where unlike Vellum, Atticus is compatible on PC and Mac. So if you're a PC user who is interested in Vellum, this is a great alternative. The next option is Scrivener. Scrivener can export to ebook file formats. And so if you're familiar with the software, you can use it to format and export. It's not software designed specifically for formatting, but it is a powerful tool. And basically anything you can do in Vellum, you can do in Scrivener, though sometimes it's a little more complicated. If you're a really experienced Scrivener user, then this may seem relatively straightforward, but I wouldn't recommend formatting in Scrivener to a new Scrivener user who is not familiar with the software. Scrivener has a bit of a learning curve anyways. And so trying to learn how to format when you're new to the software is going to be just way too much. Formatting in Scrivener is similar to formatting in Word, but adjusted based on Scrivener's format of having the manuscript in different movable sections rather than one long document. First of all, you want to make sure that your document is in the right template. Scrivener has a novel template specifically for novels, so make sure you're in that template. And at this point, you should have a finished manuscript with all the scenes and chapters in the correct order. Then you can set up the front and back matter. These should be automatically included in the novel template, but you'll want to create different versions for the print and ebook. Then you can go to File, Compile, and select either PDF if you're formatting for print or EPUB 3 ebook if you're formatting for ebook. Then select duplicate and edit format. Now, if you're formatting for print, there's a bit of rejigging here. You'll have to adjust the margins and trim sizes just like you would in Word. I'd recommend checking the KDP guidelines to make sure you're adjusting to the correct size for your book. Then you can also edit the metadata, which is also found under the compile settings. Then you can start doing some more design work and edit the section layouts. So click on the assign section layouts button and you can select the design for each section and element of your book, like the chapter headings, scenes, table of contents, etc. And then finally, you can compile and check the file and make any final tweaks needed. The final option, and probably the least complicated, is to hire a formatter. If you have more complex formatting work that you want done, such as more intricate or custom design maybe for a nonfiction book, if you have a lot of charts or images to work around, or if you're formatting a picture book, you may want to hire an interior designer rather than DIYing the formatting. Interior design is probably the best place to DIY as an indie author if you are on a budget and you are publishing a relatively standard novel. But if it's in your budget or you're formatting something more complex, or if you just can't get the results on your own, Hiring an interior designer can really take the formatting to the next level. If you're looking to hire an interior designer, you can find vetted and experienced designers along with editors on the Reedsy Marketplace, which makes finding designers and editors really easy. You can filter by service 
artists and even genre so you can find an interior designer who's going to suit your manuscript's specific needs. If you're looking to hire an interior designer or any publishing professional, you can check out the Readsy Marketplace linked in the description. So those are six different ways to format a manuscript. Ultimately, it's going to come down to your budget, what kind of investments you do or don't want to make into the interior design, how complex the design work that you want to do, is, as well as which tools and software you're already comfortable with. If you feel like you're a Scrivener whiz, maybe you feel really comfortable formatting by yourself in Scrivener. If you're an indie author, I would love to know which tools you use for the interior design of your manuscript. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye.